Hey everybody and welcome to this, my second of three videos on the Canon EOS 3. We're going to go through this camera and talk about how to do all of the things with it, except for the custom functions, which we'll talk about in video three. First thing we're going to do, however, because this camera cannot operate without a battery, it, we are going to change the battery in this camera. We're going to need a nickel or some other coin to unscrew the battery chamber, which then just pops right off of the camera. The camera uses a 2CR5 battery, and you use your finger like that to pop the old one out, just like that. Then you grab your new one, and the contacts go towards the outside of the grip. You can see inside the battery chamber where the contacts touch the, uh, the interface for the battery grip. There are, I believe, other battery grips for this camera. I, I don't quote me on that, but this is the only one that I have. The 2CR5 battery, by the way, if this does have AA options, for instance, the 2CR5 battery will last longer and be more powerful. Then the battery grip just goes right back on the camera like this. And then you can get this tightened a big chunk of the way with your finger before finishing it off with, the, with a coin. And that's how you change the battery. Next, before we start using this, let's talk about calibrating the eye focus because we're going to want to be able to use autofocus well. Turn the camera on. So what you're going to do is look through the viewfinder and you're going to set the ECF dial to calibrate. Well, where's the ECF dial? I don't know. There it is. This is the ECF dial. So we're going to set it to calibrate. And then you're going to look at the flashing rectangle while pressing the shutter button. So hold it up to your eye, look at the flashing rectangle, and press the shutter button. Uh, calibrations are cumul okay, so calibrations on this are cumulative. So the camera will work better as you calibrate it more often. So it's not a bad idea to calibrate this every few times that you use it. And also multiple calibrations with different lenses and in different lighting will help improve calibration on this camera. And when you set the custom functions, and we'll see this in video three, when you set custom function to 13 to option number two, that will limit the number of AF sensors to 11, and that can even help further improve eye focus accuracy. So the um, eye control focus on the EOS 3 can struggle if you wear glasses, especially if you have glasses with an anti-glare coating. So just be aware, if you are a glasses wearer, that eye focus may be inaccurate for you. So if you'll notice, that's why I actually leave it off, because with my glasses, eye focus uh, has no idea that my eye is there. Next thing we're going to talk about is mounting and unmounting the lenses. Very simple. To remove a lens that's on the camera, you push the lens release button down and turn it counter or anti-clockwise until it stops, and then remove it. To mount a lens, you find the red dot on the lens, the red dot on the mount, line them up, drop the lens in, and then turn it clockwise until it clicks into place and you've mounted your lens. Next, let's load and unload film. So to open the film back, you push down on the lock and then slide the release downward. We're going to grab our roll of film, drop it into the back of the camera. Nope, got to load it this way, opposite of all the rest of the film cameras I've done in the last two days. There we go, okay. Pull out the leader, drop it off at the leader index right there that tells you where to stop the leader, close the film back, and it has now automatically advanced the film to the first frame. So we'll shoot a bunch of frames here, and now we're going to open up the film. Film is one and done, so it can record light exactly once, either in a controlled manner with a proper shutter speed and aperture, or in an uncontrolled manner where all the photons reaching it will be absorbed, like this. Well, not absorbed. Most of them are reflected because you can see film, it's not black. That would mean it was all being absorbed. Anyway, 
So what happens when you advance the film is that it's pulled out of the cassette. Here's where the image is taken, and then the, after the photo is taken, the camera advances it to fresh film coming out of the cassette and keeps taking it up and up and up, taking each frame until the images are done and then the camera automatically rewinds the film um, this way. I'm gonna go very gently. I need to use this film more, but I don't wanna burn out the motor. And keeps rewinding the film into the camera after all of the frames have been, been spent. It will automatically do that. There we go. And so basically, uh, everything on this is automatic. In the third video, if there is a way to leave a leader, which I believe there is, when you rewind the film versus rewinding it all the way, we'll see how it does that. Next thing we're gonna talk about with this camera are the shooting modes, program, aperture, priority, and so forth. I'm gonna go here to mode. Okay, so your drive modes are accessed through the mode button here. They are AV, DEP, M, TV, bulb, and P. So let's go through these in order of easiness. Bulb is push the shutter button down and it stays open until you release it. Program is program mode. Basically the camera will pick the best shutter speed and aperture for you. If you hold down the asterisk button, you can, pro uh, no, yeah. If you hold down the asterisk button, you can program mode shift and have some control over your uh, exposure, just like that. There we go. Aperture value or aperture priority shooting, same thing. You control the aperture and the camera will pick the best shutter speed. So you can see as I adjust the front, the command wheel, the aperture changes. In, oops, wrong way. We'll do depth last. In TV, which is time value or shutter priority, I pick the shutter speed and then the camera picks the aperture. If the aperture number is blinking, there is not enough light, even wide open or stopped all the way down. If it's blinking stopped all the way down, there's too much light for a proper, for a proper exposure. And that means you just have to readjust your shutter speed until you get an aperture you can use. M is full manual mode. Adjust, using the command dial adjusts the shutter speed. Using the rear wheel adjusts the aperture. In full manual mode, you are responsible for the success or failure of your image and your camera will do nothing to help you other than tell you if your exposure is a good one or not. In DEP, this is auto exposure depth of field. And what this does is pick the best aperture for a, to get all of your subjects in focus. So if you're taking a picture and you have a group of people standing in your frame, the person who's nearest and the person who's furthest would theoretically need to have a, uh, you wanna have all both of them in focus. So the camera will pick a depth of field that will get all of them in focus for you and then take that exposure. And it does that by using the metering and, within the camera to figure out where everybody is. So next thing let's talk about here is the autofocus button. And when you push the autofocus button, it brings up these options over here, which are AI servo and one shot. Those are your two choices. So one shot is good for portraits or stationary subjects, buildings, statues, whatever, where you will hold down the shutter button halfway to get focus. And then when it focus is achieved, it will keep it there and take your picture. Let's see, maybe if I point it, there you go. And you, and you can see once it has locked into focus, it will not change. AI servo is good for moving subjects. And what that does is that will track autofocus as subjects move or as your camera moves. So what this will do is allow you to track moving objects like people in playing sports or kids at the playground, for instance. All right, so let's pick metering modes on the Canon EOS 3. To do that, we're gonna hold this button down here, and this will allow us to pick a metering mode or compensate the exposure value. 
To compensate the exposure value, we'll rotate the rear wheel on the back to underexpose an image intentionally or to overexpose it. To pick a metering mode, we, we rotate the command wheel on top between four options. Empty box, box with all the stuff, box with circle, box with dot. That's what I call them. So what do they all mean? So empty box is center weighted averaging mode. Box with all the stuff is evaluative. Box with circle is partial spot metering. And box with dot is spot metering. So let's start with evaluative metering, which is box with all the stuff in it. Basically, there are 21 metering zones in the camera, and they are spread out over the entire viewfinder. The majority of them are smaller zones within and around, actually really within the, the oval part of the focusing screen. The way that this mode works is it uses data from all of those zones to determine the best exposure. It also factors in which zones have the active focus in them when calculating what is going to be in a, uh, exposed properly so that your subject, which is in focus, has a better chance of being exposed properly. Then partial, which one is partial? Partial, which is box and circle, what this does is this uses a small area around the central circle the very small circle in the center, which is about 8.5%, it is actually 8.5% of the frame, and 100% of your metering comes from that little circle. Spot metering, which is box with dot, uses only the very center of the image, which is 2.4% of the frame, and all of the metering data comes from that little tiny area. And then center-weighted averaging will um, take data even from the entire focusing screen. The majority of the metering data will come from the center, but uh, data from all around it will be used. And then there is also focus point linked spot metering. Now what that will do is that will do spot metering but it will be linked to your focus point. And in video three, when we get to custom function 13, then um, this is an option that you can select to use. And what that will mean is wherever your focus point is, that focus point will provide 100% of the metering data. So if you have a person over here and their face is in focus, the 100% of the metering will come off of their face. Likewise, if you put them over here or somewhere else in the frame. So very, very strong focusing tool. So let's talk about what each of these can be used for. Evaluative is just a good walk around, everyday use for most subjects in most scenes metering. Partial is good if you're going to have your subjects center uh, placed in the center of your frame. Spot is really good if what you want to do is get a very precise meter reading off a very specific and small part of the frame, save that meter reading, and then recompose. And center weighted is another good all around general shooting um, uh, mode. It's also good for use with flashes. So whichever one you want to use is completely up to you and what you're going to be shooting with, but those are the, some general uses for each of those different uh, metering modes. Next, we're going to talk about ISO. If you push down the AF and metering mode buttons, you can adjust your ISO. You can either, uh, you can, it will pick up the, the DX code ISO, but you can use this to either intentionally push or pull your film or set the ISO on uh, specialty films that do not have a DX code. Next, we'll talk about drive modes, continuous, self-timer 10 seconds, self-timer 2 seconds, single shot. Those are your options. Single shot is you can take a picture and then hold the thumb down until the entire planet is eaten by the sun and it will never take another frame. Multiple exposure or continuous is it will keep taking photos as long as it, you have film. 
and it sounds like it's around five frames per second, give or take, um, that will go through your film pretty quickly. A 10 second countdown and a two second countdown on your self timer. We'll push down the mode button and the AF button together and we're going to bring up your auto exposure bracketing. So by using the command wheel, you can select auto exposure bracketing and you can select how many stops apart the images are. It will always do three. And I thought you could shift on this, but you can't. Not through here anyway. So at any rate, what this will do is this will underexpose right now 1.3 stops, properly expose, and then overexpose 1.3 stops. And you can adjust that to what you need it to be. Oops, don't want to leave that in place. And then to undo it, you just bring this back down to 0, 0, and a single dot. And that turns off exposure bracketing. To autofocus point select, you're going to push down the autofocus select button. If you see this symbol, all autofocus points will be active. If you rotate the top command wheel or the rear command wheel, you can then select a single or a group of autofocus points instead. And then when you get back to this symbol, you've selected all autofocus points to be active. So selecting an autofocus point can be really useful if you know that you're going to frame all of your images the same way. Let's say that you are at a basketball game and you're set up and you want to capture a dunk. Okay, so bear with me here. You're going to have a portrait orientation image with the basket up here and you want to capture your, the player dunking. What you're going to do is you're going to set your camera up to do portrait orientation. You're going to find the autofocus point that is on the basket right here. And then when the player starts to jump before they get to the basket, you'll start taking photos. The autofocus will already be on the basket. So when the player gets to the basket to do the dunk, then you have focus there and you can take your frame. And one, you'll have a bunch of frames that are leading up to it. They might be good too, but you'll also get your shot. That's just one example of how selecting an autofocus point can be useful in taking an image. Next thing we're going to do is check on the battery's power. And custom function here, there's a button right above a standard battery icon. Might be a little bit dark. But we do, if you push that, it will say battery check, and then it will tell you how much life the battery has. This battery is full. It's brand new. Next thing we're going to do is, is multiple exposures. This button right here underneath the battery check is for multiple exposures. We're going to push that. And then using the command wheel on top, we're going to select a number of frames up to nine. And that's how many multiple exposures we can take. So stop there. We're going to come back to that in a minute. OK, so let's take what we have learned here so far, put everything together, and take a photo with this camera. It's pretty simple. Once you get your settings dialed in that you want to use, whatever shooting mode you want to use, whether or not whatever type of autofocus, however you want your, your frames to be driven. Once you've got those selected, you're in pretty good shape to, uh, to start taking your photos. So what we're going to do is, if you are using autofocus, it's just a matter of half, half depressing the shutter, getting focus and taking your pictures. If you're manually focusing, it's just a matter of focusing manually and taking your pictures. OK, it, it's really simple. I mean, the camera is designed to take pictures and take them well. So what about double exposures? Double exposures are really easy. I'm going to show you the mechanics of it first, and then we'll talk a little bit about the science. On the side, under this flap, there's a button. It's the second button from the bottom. It's the bottom black button. It's under a symbol of two overlapping squares. Push that, and then rotate the command wheel to select the number of exposures you want in your multiple exposure image. We're just going to do two. We're going to keep it simple. And once it's in two, you'll press the, the, the shutter release twice. The first time, it will count down to one. The second time, that will disappear, and then the film will advance. With this camera, it will not advance the film until the number of double or multiple exposures is reached. 
That's the mechanics of it. Let's talk a little bit about the science and how to do it with this camera. Let's say that you're in manual mode. Fantastic, that's coincidence. And your proper exposure is 1 1 of a second at f5.6. What you're going to do is if you take two frames, so if this is a proper amount of light for one image, if you put two frames onto your camera with the proper amount of light, it's going to be what's called thick, dark, or dense. They're all interchangeable words for the same thing, which is that too much light has reached your film. The consequence of having too much light reach your film is that when you print it in the dark room, you'll lose contrast and your print times will be very long. When you digitize your film, you'll have a lot of digital noise and you'll lose contrast. So it's a good idea to have a good double exposure practice. So in manual mode, it's really easy to compensate. What you need to do is cut the amount of light in half for a double exposure, which means removing one stop of light. 1 1 25th is a fraction, and what we can do is remove one stop of light by adjusting the shutter speed up to 1 2 50th. That is half the time, half as much light. Another way to do it is to adjust the aperture to f8. That's one stop smaller than f5.6. Okay, that's really easy to do. And then with your in, in concert with the double exposure function that we just saw, you cut the light in half, take your two pictures, the camera automatically advances it, and you've gotten a successful double exposure. Okay, manual mode's a bit frustrating to use sometimes. What about using any of the other modes except bulb? Won't work for bulb. Bulb uses the exact same process as manual, only you have to count how many seconds less you need. But for all of these other automatic or semi-automatic modes, we'll keep it in program here. Um, but for all of the, but for the two semi-automatic modes, which are AV and TV, the function's a little bit different. You can do a double exposure one of two ways. You dial it into the side, and then you either hold down the asterisk, oops, I'm sorry, you either hold down the exposure compensation and underexpose one stop. And that will give you a shutter speed which is one stop faster. Take your double exposure and it will then advance. Or, actually that is the only way you can do it. Take that back. And the same thing applies with aperture uh, priority. I'm sorry, with shutter priority. When you're using shutter priority, you go into exposure compensation you pull it back one stop, that cuts the amount of light in half, and you take your pictures. In the exact same process with DEP or program. So basically in the automatic or semi-automatic modes, you use exposure value compensation minus a stop. In full manual, you simply adjust the settings yourself mentally to remove half of the light that's going to reach the film. And that's how you take a double exposure. And guess what? That is everything we had to cover in the second video about the Canon EOS 3. In the third video, we're going to go into the custom functions, and everything we do is going to be geared at setting up the specific operation of the camera to your liking. We'll see you there. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.